Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome to today's Water Wednesday. If this is the first time you turn in, you may wonder what is Water Wednesday. So the short way to describe Water Wednesday, it's a new Facebook live series uh, provided by University of Florida IFS Extension Water Experts uh, with Facebook live a talk about Florida's water every Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock Eastern time. Um, and today's talk is about a different irrigation system. Oh, excuse me, different irrigation sensors. And we got our guest speaker, Eva Pavan. She's the hot culture agent in UFIFS extension on Osceola County. Am I, am I right, Eva? So, yes. <laughs> great. You can tell because we, we have uh, 67 counties. Uh, so somehow I got nervous and I forgot which county uh, Eva, uh, Eva is from. Um, and if you wonder what is the UF IFAS extension, so I always say the best way to describe us uh, is that uh, we are the extension of University of Florida because now you know it's the information era. When you have a smartphone, when you have your internet with you, so basically you can find all kinds of information online. But the question is always, is that information reliable? So the difference, uh, be, uh, be, uh, the difference between us and on, uh, other online sources uh, is the, what we say is not our opinion. It's all science-based, uh, research-based. So today, let's welcome Eva to give us a quick inter uh, a quick overview of different irrigation sensors. Now let's welcome Eva. Hi, good afternoon. Um, like Eileen said, my name is Eva Pavon and I am in Osceola County. Um, I also in addition to be the master guard, the residential horticulture agent, I am the master gardener coordinator here in Osceola County. And we offer education for um, the homeowners, if they want to have a garden, you know, if you have a question about how I identify this insect or what is going on with my plant, you can call me and or send me an email and my email and my phone number is going to be at the end and we will be happy to identify the problem and help you to make um, better decisions on how to treat it. And you will be surprised how many times you don't have to do absolutely anything. You just have to let the plant is a beneficial insect or, you know, you're just watering too much. There is, um, it is important to always identify before we do any treatment. So we're going to, um, talk about different rain sensors and it's going to be why we need um, rain irrigation sensors or rain sensors or water sensors is depending who you ask um, but it is important to have a working rain sensor number one it is the law so it is the law in Florida if you have a, a irrigation system you must have a working um, rain sensor okay and why because we can conserve water and um, we will conserve water because what this does is it will turn off the irrigation if we have rain the day before even you know if if there is um enough rain that afternoon so the irrigation will be turned off you also will save money so the less irrigation water you use obviously is the less money you have to pay in your utility bill okay also it reduces the wear on your irrigation system because you can use it late less so this time of the year we have rain every day um, sometimes it's at three o'clock here in Osceola today we already have like three different showers even with lightning and we have all kind of weather advisories today so you never know sometimes it's at 10 a.m sometimes it's at 11 p.m but we have rain so why are you going to have that irrigation system running so if you have a rain sensor the irrigation um equipment is not going to run as much and then that will help with the reducing the wear on the irrigation also if we don't overwater we will reduce diseases and weeds 
Okay, I'm sure um, you can go to a garden and you will see, especially this time of the year, a lot of dollar wheat. And dollar wheat is a sign that you're watering too much or you have too much rain. Like my irrigation has been off for the last two, three weeks and I still have dollar weeds in my backyard because it's been raining a lot. And I actually, for the record, I don't have irrigation in my backyard, only the front yard, and I still have dollar weed because of the, the all the rain that we had. Um, so, but when we have a working sensor, also reduces the diseases and weeds. And also, the most important probably of all this is the help protects the surface and groundwater here in Florida. So it, it reduces the runoff water, also reduces um, the non. Um, non-source pollution that goes down the drain and then ends in our lake. So it is very, it's, it's a little um, change that you can do at your home and make a big difference. So let's talk about the two main um, sensors, uh, type of sensors that are available for homeowners. One of them is the rain sensor. It should be, it's, it's designed to stop the irrigation if there is rain. So it measures the irrigation, measures, it measures the rainfall, fall, um, and then it is mounted in an open area. So typically you see these kind of sensors either by your roof or in a fence. So it is in an open area, no, no trees over or anything. And this is connected to your irrigation clock. Okay, um, some of them are wireless. This is in my house. So the one I have has a wire, um, but there is new technology and there is different type of rain sensors. Okay, um, they are from $30 to, I saw one yesterday for $150. Okay, it's, it's how much you wanna invest and you know what is available for you. They're available pretty much everywhere. Um, any garden center has one or two different brands and it's not you can order them online. So the rain sensors prevents the overwatering due to rain. Okay, so if you're not home, you're on vacation, instead of turning off your irrigation, you can leave it on and then the rain sensor should be able to shut off your irrigation if there is any, a lot of rain. You can set up the irrigation, if you look at the picture, you can put it that it can be from one, one eighth of, of inch of water to up to three quarters of inch of water. So you can change it depending during the time of the year. They are available wireless or with wire. You need to make sure it's active. And in this next slide, you're gonna be, you're gonna see the picture where you, that you need to make your, your irrigation controllers need to be active, okay? It's not bypass, but you will see it in the next picture. And having a working rain sensor, you can save up to 2000 gallons of water and up to $200 a year, okay? So who doesn't wanna save money, right? So here is a picture, you need to make sure that is active, okay? If you if your irrigation box or, or controller says bypass, it's gonna rain and your irrigation is still gonna work. Okay, so you need to make sure it's active. So the other one is the soil moisture sensors. So this one is a little different than the other one. And also is connected to your irrigation system, okay, to, to your controllers. Also, they come wireless and with wire. This one, the difference is, will measure the soil moisture in real time, okay? So when the irrigation is about to turn on, the sensor will measure the amount of moisture that is in the soil. And then it will bypass the scheduled irrigation. So it, it will not, um, it will not, um, the irrigation will not be on, okay? When you have a working soil moisture sensor, you can save between uh, up to $500 and 28,000, over 28,000 gallons of water. So I know here locally, there is a neighborhood 
that has um, the new section, the new houses, they decide to put the rain sensors and their water bills are completely different than the rest of the neighborhood. So there is a big change because this is measuring the moisture directly in the soil. So some of the benefits that we have when you use a soil moisture sensor is that promotes deeper root growth. Why? Because there is not that much water um, and the water is deeper in the soil. So the plants are going to be looking for water and getting deeper into the, the, the soil. So that will help these plants to be established and, and stronger because they have deeper root system. Also maintains the optim, optimum moisture in the soil. So if it's sometimes like we can have an inch of water of rain in like a matter of 15 minutes, half an hour here, maybe an hour, and that it was not, it didn't go that deep in the soil. So that will also minimize the plant wilting because the, this, this sensor actually measure what is in the ground. Okay, so those are the two main sensors that are available for homeowners. Um, the, especially the second one, I will suggest that you, um, find an electrician or someone that works, they knows how to work the cables and all that and to install it. Any of the systems, um, you can adapt that to your irrigation controllers. And, and like I said earlier, some of them are wireless, some of them are, um, you have to connect it to the, to the, to the controller. And both of them, you save money. Also, the other big difference is the soil moisture sensors. They run from like $150 to $300. So they're a little more expensive, but it's an, an investment at the beginning. And at the end, if you see, you can almost triple the saving when you actually have a soil moisture um, sensor in your garden. If you have any other questions about irrigation, homeowners irrigation, um, you can call me. Um, my number here in Osceola is 321-697-3022, or you can email me. Um, I'm able to, I'm available to help you with any questions about gardening. Great, thank you, Eva. Um, I'm looking at our Facebook now. We don't have any questions. If you have any questions, uh, please just uh, leave in the comment session. Eva will answer your question. So I'm just curious, uh, how many of you who are watching um, have a ring sensor? If you have a ring sensor, just please put in the comment. You have a ring sensor or you have a soil moisture sensor. And I will also would like to ask, do you know if it's working? That's a good question. And if you missed how to check if your ring sensor is working or not, I will post a link for that, Eva did another Water Wednesday with us last month. It's about how to make sure your ring sensor is working. And I know, because um, we are using Zoom to broadcast our talk to Facebook. So there are about 10 seconds delay. So we will just wait a little bit to see your comments. I'm, I'm not saying anything at this point, but which is fine. Um, and you can see Eva's phone number on the, um, on the last slide. And I will also add Eva's uh, Facebook page at our comment session. So you can also follow and uh, like her Facebook page uh, to find more information about gardening. And uh, for the, I do have a question actually for Eva. It's about soil moisture sensor. I know it's uh, for soil moisture sensor, we usually say for, um, actually, I, I, it's a two part question. So for a small lot, uh, like a uh, yard, uh, do you think a soil, moist, a soil moisture sensor is a good option? I will say it depends how big is the yard because there is specific recommendations where this sensor should be. 
Okay. It should be three feet away from any structure, you know, mm -hmm. three, three feet away from the house and three feet away from a sidewalk. So if you have a small lot, do I really need to have that investment? You know, if is do I have a correct place to do to put this sensor? Um, so those are things that you need to consider, um, especially in a smaller like yard. I will I will say like my house, um, my front yard, every, my front line lawn is very small, very limited. So I personally, in my own house, I don't think I will put a sensor because it's a small area, I just make sure my rain, um, my rain um, sensor is working. Gotcha. I do it manually, you know, and mm -hmm. the only problem doing manually is that if you go on vacation and then that weekend or that week wouldn't have any rain. That's the only concern. Okay. Yeah, that's what I've learned. I know for growers, uh, like agriculture practices, so they're adopting uh, their practicing soil moisture sensor more than uh, like residential irrigation, especially like in a very developed uh, community, the lot size of maybe only like one tenth acre or maybe like I, I saw a lot like one tenth or 0.2 acre. So that's always my question. So it seems like if it's a small, a very small lot, then it may not be a good investment. Yeah, and I will say if any growers is looking at this um, Water Wednesday, I know Grandly Ricketts did a uh, whole research on, on moisture sensors in salt farms. And he has great data on water savings for those growers. Because instead of having their their irrigation just running in the salt farms, they they place sensors and then they save a lot of money. I don't have the specific numbers, but if anyone wants to know the specific numbers, they can email me and I will make sure Grandly gets the, the question too. Sounds good. Awesome. And thank you so much, Eva. And for those who are watching that, if you have any questions, you can always leave in the comment session. Uh, even if it's like you are watching the recordings, feel free to ask any questions. We will get the answers back to you as soon as possible. So thank you again, Eva, for this interesting talk. And uh, we will see you all next Wednesday. And the next Water Wednesday, it's how to build a ring barrel. So enjoy the rest of your Wednesday afternoon and see you next Wednesday. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.